The history of the 35th Division began with wheels. In 1846, when the Mexican War broke out, we were hustled from our homes in Missouri to the far west to guard the pioneer wagons that blazed the old Santa Fe Trail. From then on, our outfits saw action in the Civil War with the blue and the gray, the Indian campaigns, the Spanish-American War, the Philippine insurrection, and on the Mexican border in 16 and 17. In fact, it was in 1917 that we adopted the Santa Fe Cross, which had been employed in the old days in markers along the historic trail, and we used it as the shoulder patch design. A white cross within a white wagon wheel on a blue field. Well, wheels came into our lives again in World War I. After being organized as a division from Midwestern National Guard units, in August of 1917, the 35th took to the high seas. And arrived in France, May 11, 1918. We attacked the Bosch from September 26th to October 14th, 1918, capturing Vauquois, Baron, Chijan in the Avancourt and Somadur sections. In April of 1919, we were finally relieved and returned home to Blighty. There was an officer with us at the time in command of Battery D of the 1 Artillery, Captain Harry S. Truman, who hitched his wagon wheel to a star and became the big wheel himself 27 years later. But the good old 35th wasn't to be permanently deactivated. During the years of peace, the 35th, as units of the Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri National Guard, had stood ready in its vigil for our national security. Then a guy named Hitler decided to get tough with the world. He rolled up in his Mercedes-Benz job. And then he began to roll all over Europe with his armored Blitzkrieg. That's when we joined up to dump the wheels of a Nazi apple cart with our own wheels of war. So back into federal service went the old 35th when we were inducted December 23rd, 1940, and we were on wheels again. We began training at Camp Robinson, Arkansas. Took part in the Louisiana maneuvers Polished up our training at Rucker, Alabama, at the Tennessee Maneuvers, and the West Virginia Winter Mountain Maneuvers. We knew we were being toughened up for something important. The big push, maybe. Our first inkling of what was in the cards for us came in May 1944, when, under secret orders, we embarked for England. Yup, we were on the go again. Avonmouth, Bodmin, Penzance, and St. Ives in merry old England. Merry? Ha! Huh. General Ike and General Patton inspected us, together with Major General Paul W. Body, our commanding general for the duration. A great guy, Ike. He promised us a party on the Rhine with champagne when it was all over. You know, he paid off, too. He... Oh, well, that's getting ahead of our story. Exactly nine days later, the Santa Fe Division found itself on the go again. This time, it was for real. This was it. For on 5 July, we became part of the invasion of Europe and celebrated a late 4th of July with guns and men in Normandy, France, on Omaha Beach and Colville-sur-Mer, with Saint-Lô as our objective, the gateway to the French interior. 
Our first action was a defensive one at the Veer Canal, July 8th, near St. Nicholas. Then on July 11th, at 0600, we attacked. And some more. We met heavy machine gun and mortar fire, reinforced with everything the Heinies had. But we went through until one battalion was stopped at Chateau Saint-Gilles near a heavily fortified church. Another battalion bypassed the church. The crowds were tough at La Petite Ferma. We broke through though and advanced to La Carrion. Yep, the 35th kept going, and on foot. Some of us drove to a point a little north of San Lo, our immediate objective being a long, forbidding hill, hill number 122, dominating the town. That drive carried others of us to Emily. The crowds counterattacked 12 times. No soap, though. Our wheels weren't geared for going backward, so we attacked once more on July 18th. It's still Hill 122, but at the day's end, sure, we took Hill 122. And on through the ruins of St. Lo, which had once been a thriving city of about 10,000 people, With San Lo taken, we hot-footed it across the Cherbourg Peninsula and on to Mortain. On wheels through Avranche, just in time to help throw back the German counterattack. We did our bit at Mortain and rescued the 30th Division's famed Lost Battalion. Some of us were lost, too. There was no stopping us after that. August 16th, we liberated Orléans and went on to cross the rivers Soir, Seine, Marne, Meuse, and the Yonne River to Joigny. You should have seen the faces of the French people in Montagy when we liberated the city from the crowds. We provided an honor guard for the fallen FFE, but continued on again until we reached Nancy. We crossed the Moselle and took Nossi on September 15th. Some of us didn't join in the fun. Then we crossed the Mirth River the next day until on December 5th, we attacked Sargamine. We took Sargamine and crossed the Saar and the Blyce Rivers. Ever hear of a place called Bastonia? We got to learn a lot about it in the Ardennes campaign when we beat off attacks by four Kraut divisions. Yep, four of them. That's where the 134th earned its well-deserved Regimental Distinguished Unit Citation. But help was needed in the north, so the 35th was moseyed up on wheels again to join the 9th Army at Maastricht, Holland, where we relieved the 155th British Infantry Brigade. 
we took up positions along the Ruhr River in Germany from Anandal south to Krautdorf under Lieutenant General W.H. Simpson, our former commanding general. The jump off for the Rhine came on February 24th at Hillfarth, where they tried to stop us with mines. Casualties, too. At Huckelhoven, we ran into some tough opposition. Then we rolled 45 miles along the famed Siegfried Line. On our wheels again, and took Van Lo Holland on our way to the Rhine. We took 23 towns in two days, including Sevelen, Minchin Gladbach, and Lindfort. We converged on Drupt. Millingen and Ossenburg also fell. Rheinberg was cleared by some of our boys of the 137. By March 10th, we had completed the reduction of the Vassal sector. The British made contact with us the next day. With Germany lying ahead of us, ours for the taking, did we take it? Well, what do you think? Die Wacht am Rhein was kaputt. We had definitely reached the pursuit phase, though there was still a lot of work to be done. We were part of the 9th Army's drive in the final crushing of the Krauts. The tacticians described it as exploiting the enemy's rear areas after breaching his frontal positions. We called it a rat race. So far, we had traveled 1,300 miles across France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, and Germany to do it. On March 27th, some of us moved into the center of the line and battled in strongly defended woods loaded with small arms, mortar, and artillery fire. We took Gladbach and pushed on past the bridgehead limits to within two miles of Recklinghausen. We took Recklinghausen, April 3rd. And then, Hurton suffered a relapse. Along the rhine herne Canal, the Krauts tried to stop us by blowing up bridges in our faces. But Herne Canal territory was ours. When we crossed the canal and grabbed Herne and Gelsenkirchen, the Ruhr pocket was almost cleared, so we jumped on wheels again. 295 miles in two days to the Elbe River. As the crow flies, we were only 40 miles from Berlin. Of all American troops, the Santa Fe was the nearest to Berlin, capital of the German Reich. By April 27th, the last resistance in our sector was over. Yes, the Heinies were ready to call it quits. The 35th was given a rest on occupation duty in the Hanover area. At Koblenz and Tangermunde, we put in a few more licks of occupation duty and grabbed some relaxation at Bad Bergricht in Germany, where we conducted a swimming meet. But the 35th was scheduled to be redeployed through the U.S. for duty in the Pacific. No dice, though. VJ Day came along. Peace broke out while we were still in France. We broke open some French fizz water to celebrate. And some of us celebrated in other ways. Yes, the big wheel had rolled to a full stop. Many of our buddies had hitched their wagon wheels to their last stars. At Brussels, Belgium, President Truman came over and reviewed his old outfit. It had garnered its full share of honors and decorations. Medal of Honor? Yep. DSCs? Sure, 35 of them. Oh, lots of other kinds of fruit salad. 
including 15,000 Purple Hearts and seven Distinguished Unit Citations. We were returned stateside September of 45. Today, once more, we're back home in our armories as citizen soldiers carrying on the traditions of our forefathers, National Guardsmen of the 35th. The infantry, the dog.